Thank you for listening to the Dog Trainers Podcast, a podcast created by dog trainers, for dog trainers, or anyone who's ever fallen in love with man's best friend. Anyway, it was it was the funniest thing because everybody on Tinder was like, oh, I probably swiped whatever it is left or right, you know, because of your dog. Until they actually meet a dog trainer who has like 10, 11, 12 dogs at the house. And then they're like, fuck that. I'm out of here. And she, yeah. she like her credit. She's, she puts up with all these dogs. Sometimes they're yippies. Sometimes like, like you're talking about crate anxiety and all that good stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, she's legit. I, <laughs> that's awesome. Totally. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, she, I mean, she, that she was is, in it. that's like my, I am still learning to not get my worth from like my pro- productivity. Cause like I grew up in a family that's go, go, go. My dad mm-hmm. is like the hardest worker. I, you know, I've been kind of nonstop for a long time. And Mm -hmm. my husband is like, nothing would make him happier if he walked in one day and I was like sitting vegging on the couch, like Mm -hmm. nothing would make him happier than like, and we're like, and so we're this good balance. Cause he's like, if I'm tired, I rest. Like Mm -hmm. if I'm, I don't care if it's two in the afternoon. Like Mm -hmm. if I want to sit and watch something for a little bit, that's what I do. Like, and so he, I'm grateful for him because he's put limitations on like, on how many dogs can have in like mm. when you check out, like when, cause with boredom trains, it just is hard. And I love, and it's hard when you also love your job. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, I mean, be, let's be realistic out. at the end of this, we have to rotate some dogs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah let's be yeah. realistic. Yeah. I actually have no boredom trains in my house oh, right nice. now. I only Lucky. have four dogs. Not you're to brag, regular. but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know what? You're touching on something that I wanted to talk about anyway, which was time management. And I think that mm-hmm. that props to your husband. And, and I, I feel bad for my girlfriend because she's, she's, what's this word? What's the, what's the proper wording to say? She like looks to me m- more in the relationship. Like it goes kind of this way. So yeah, she, I don't want it to make it seem like I steamroll her, but she's not th- going to be the one to be like, you need to limit the dogs to this, this, and this, you know, yeah. like she just doesn't have it in her. And, and, and if she wanted to you guys to, live I, together. I, yeah, she's here. She's, yeah, oh. you know, uh, we want to go get her. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, um, but, you know, with that being said, I, I'm trying to get better at playing off of her. Like the busier, we're like super busy. We have more dogs than even, than I want right now, if I'm being honest with you. Yeah. And yeah. I'm trying to be more fair and round out with her. Like I'm trying to, since we're being so busy, I'm like, well, you know what? I'm going to spend a, some of this on you. Let's go here. Let's do this. Let's do that. Like, what do you need? What totally. do you, you know? At the end of the day, though, I know that what she wants is just my time, you know, so I'm, I'm trying to find the ways to do it. So hence looking for employees and stuff like that and setting the boundaries yeah. in myself because I know she wants them. She just won't she won't put it on me, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think. I mean, my husband and I have been living together now for. Seven years and we've been together for like 12. So. Mm-hmm he did not put limitations on like, we need some dogs out of this fucking house for like a good five years into my, into my business, I would say. And there was a time we were in like a little bungalow in East Hollywood and I had like 12 dogs, like, Mm. because, you know, cause they're like, I was out walking them all day, you know, like it's like, but there was, you know, there was way too much. And I feel like he's given, but also I've gotten more confident in myself to say no. Like, mm-hmm. no, you know, mm-hmm. and, and when you know, you can help a dog. And I think that's the other part part is like, there's this owner that's struggling. There's a dog that you can help. Sometimes you feel like, oh, I'm the only one that can help this dog. Right. And it makes you want to say yes. When at the, at the same time, like you're spent and I've gotten so much, I had a rescue reach out to me. I actually had a really proud moment because Kristen Bell's is one of my clients. Mm-hmm. And I also admire her and, and really like her. I want mm-hmm. to impress her, you mm-hmm. know, like she's not a regular client. Mm-hmm. And she reached out to me because there was a dog that was found on the street. And she's like, can you take this dog in? Everything in me wanted to say yes. But I knew like I'd plan a weekend getaway with my family soon, which we rarely get to do like all this stuff. I was like, I can't. And guess what? It all worked out. I did mm-hmm. private session. It found a foster. I've been doing private sessions with it. And next week I'm taking it in for a board and train. Oh, it all worked so, out just fine. You so know, cool. like you feel like you'll lose opportunities if you say no, but at this you'll, in reality, you'll do a better job. Like yeah, right, only sure. so much we're capable of. And this is the other hard, tricky part of it. It's like, you have to work a lot to make money in the dog training world. Like we can make good money. You can make a lot an hour, Mm -hmm. but like, you know, it's not like we get paid vacations when you work for yourself. It's not like all these things. And 
last year, I mean, uh, this other trainer, we made, um, like online classes and they did well. And so now I'm kind of, I'm like, I'm making a membership page. I'm doing ways to make like passive income for all the info I already Mm -hmm. make out because, and that's like kind of my biggest advice when you get to a place that you can do that, do Mm -hmm. some of that because if it's 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 important. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's how you're going to be able to rest and like have time off. Cause that's, I mean, that's all my husband would say is like, he just wants Mm -hmm. like, we went to Big Bear a few weekends ago and we brought all of our dogs mm-hmm. and we stayed in a cabin, but it was like the quality time where you're checked out, which in any job is hard to do with Instagram. It's, it's easy to be on all the time. And, and it's interesting in my opinion, because again, I, I'm firmly in the belief of like things work out how they're supposed to, you know, mm-hmm. like, like Brent and I are from the same city, San Bernardino. Yeah. We had no clue. We were from yeah, the same we met, we That's met cool. uh, in LA. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and it's, and Brent's like my brother, like in, in all these different ways, we are just like, you I know, mean, he's more handsome. And, I get it. And, uh, <laughs> but you're more charismatic. Damn it. I, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, and the battle continues. Yeah. Um, but, um, <laughs> but it was something that, that just worked out for me very recently. I'm talking like, like a month and a half ago, maybe we mm-hmm. just had on a guest, a dog trainer named Jonas Black. Uh-huh. And, he was telling us, and the day he was saying this to us on the, on the podcast, I just needed to hear this is when you're tired, take time off. It's yep. fine. Do it. You know? And I was just worn down and my girlfriend Nobody and I gives a shit. Right. You know, and, and, and I, and I, um, it was, a. Uh, my girlfriend and I had already had a weekend scheduled to have off with her friends. We were, we rented a cabin up in Munns park, which is like up Northern Arizona. It's snowy. It's beautiful. You know, not all of the state is desert. And, uh, <laughs> it was, I wasn't, I was getting ready to like, not be okay with it. Like I hate vacations. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I don't know what to do with myself, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and so I was getting ready to like, not be okay with it. Like I'm gonna have my phone, my laptop, like I'm ready to go. I have homeworks to send. I have things to do. Um, and so, of course, my girlfriend was gearing up to be like on my ass about it. Like, hey, we're on vacation. Like, I, I need you right here, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and we do our interview with Jonas. And I'm like, you know what? Yeah, fuck it. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm like, I'm going to go and I'm just going to like sleep and do my thing. And I ended up sleeping like 60 percent of the time, which felt great. And I felt good. And it was like three days. It was nothing. And I got home and I was like, yeah, let's, let's work some dogs, yeah, you know. Good. Well, yeah, yeah. And, three, and three weeks after that, I took a week vacation. So You're right. That was, that was great. I think you 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 quoted Brene Brown when you were saying, uh, you know, don't uh, don't let uh, your productivity pretty. What is it? Don't what is it, 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 it? Don't use productivity as a status symbol. And that was that was yeah, 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 thing yeah. that I've yeah. heard from other people too. That was uh, don't you know? There's a guy named Andy Priscilla who's a little less poetic than Brene Brown, mm-hmm. and he's like <laughs> he's like. <laughs> You motherfuckers brag all the time about how busy you are. Nobody gives a fuck how busy you are. Are you being productive? You know, and I was like, that makes sense. <laughs> because you know, because you can be busy doing True. something that that gets you nothing. You can be really or busy. Or gets you a minimum, you know. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah. but but are yeah. you being effective? You yeah. Know? Yeah. So, so, yeah. Yeah. I so, think from this. Oh, sorry. No, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I. Th- it's honestly just been in the last couple of months where I have really. It's real because I've always been like, yeah, I need to work less. I need some time with my family. I need some yeah, time. Yeah, it sounds like, good in theory. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it's also like I know, but I feel like there's a big and and for like reference, like I, my husband is an actor. He's a series regular on a show, but they haven't filmed in two years. And mm. before that, he hadn't had anything. So I have been like the mm. the, the income, and he's yeah, yep. and he's with Olivia, and so um. And then, but he'll start filming again and I'll be by myself for like six months while he's filming, but it's Mm. okay. I'll make it. And, Mm. but, um, but, but that's kind of, so there is this sense of pressure of like, but like this idea of hang out with them, then I'll hang out with them. Then I have to do this. I have to get a certain amount. Mm -hmm. Like I'll do that. Then like, it's, it's always okay. Work hard now. So you can take time off later. And I think it hit me and this, and I am showing my kind of, very ego side of myself, but I, you know, there's a certain part with Instagram followers and stuff that I, I would have been like, Oh, if I just hit this number, I'll be happy. Right, like right. if I just hit this number, I'll be happy. And then I started following another trainer who had less followers than me. And then all of a sudden she shot up, she had more. And then I was like, well, and I, and I felt myself starting to compete with her. And the mm-hmm. moment I felt that I was like, cause I, I truly don't want to compete with any other trainers. I only want to mm-hmm. compete with myself. Mm-hmm. And I was like, when will you be happy girl? Like you're doing just yep. fine. Like yep, yep, yep. in because then you're going to hit 25 and you're going to go, I need 30. And then you're going to hit right. 30 and you're going to go, I need 35. And like, and you have this, you know, like, 
And when you do that, you say yes to people who actually don't matter that much, who right. don't truly know you. Yeah. And you're taking time away from like, like my two loves are my husband and my daughter. Like, and, and, and like, it makes me so happy when I can spend undivided a time with her and her silly little brain and build spaceships or whatever it is. And so it's like, at a certain point, you have to be like, I'm not working until Saturday. I'm not going to like kill myself till Saturday so I can have Sunday off with them. Right. Take 20 minutes throughout every day and be intentional with mm -hmm. time off. Like put at 4 p.m., be done with work. At 6 p.m., yeah. be done with work. That doesn't mean you won't have to rotate dogs and like let them out or whatever, but like be, be done, be done with clients. Right. Yeah, yeah right. because that's how you don't get bit, by the way. Like right. being right. tired, being tired yeah. and rushed is when you get bit. And like, I don't ever, I've gotten bit. I'm not, and I don't want to be bit. Like right. it no fucking sucks. It hurts. Right. I don't want to. And, and it's always when I've, this is every time I've been bit is when I'm rushed and tired and I'm not fully paying attention. Or this is actually the biggest one is when I have a limited time with a dog, right. like mm -hmm. a three week board and train. I can think of this one uh, pity who had really high prey drive. I hate that a story I'm telling of a dog biting me as a pit, but it is what it is. And, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I was doing day trains with it and like boarding. So it wasn't a full board and train. The owners were picking up that day and I really wanted to work ball stuff with it and like mm. structured fetch. And I could feel it getting more intense about the ball. And mm. instead of being like, okay, well, this is all I got mm. because, and trusting that I did a good it. job in mm. this amount of time that I've had with it, I felt the need to change all this behavior that they've been practicing in two years in a matter of like five days or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he was going for the ball, but he, but he bit my, bit my arm. He, yeah. bit. he wasn't trying to bite me. He was going for the ball, but he was mm -hmm. so ripped up. Mm -hmm. And I, right afterwards, I didn't even get mad. Not that you should get mad at a dog, but like be emotional with it. But I was mm -hmm. just like, that's on me. Like yeah. I pushed yeah. you yeah. to impress your owners or to get to a certain place for owners. And it just caused me to get bit. Like, yeah. instead of just trusting I've done what I could and give them yeah. homework to continue the thing, yeah. I like, you know, pushed it. So it's, it is when you're tired or when you're doing, mm -hmm. when you're trying to impress. Thank you for listening to the Dog Trainers Podcast, a podcast created by dog trainers, for dog trainers, or anyone who's ever fallen in love with man's best friend. We really hope you guys enjoyed this episode and we hope to see you back for the next one. But in the meantime, please follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Dog Trainers Podcast. Go ahead and leave a comment. Ask us any questions that you want. We would love to connect with our dog trainer communities all around the world. Take care, guys. We'll see you next time.